I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Senator Angus King spoke to Canadian government officials on Tuesday about cooperation between the U.S. and Canada in the energy sector. King asked about their thoughts on methane emissions and also how to make the permitting process more efficient. Members of the Senate Energy Committee have raised questions about why it can take years to get approval for building energy projects. Listen in to the questions from Maine's independent senator. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, Canada, of course, is a neighbor. Maine is the only state in the United States that borders only one other state but we border two provinces. And uh, I've always considered my foreign policy experience based upon the fact that I can see Canada for Maine. So, uh, uh, sorry, I, I couldn't resist. Uh, uh, Premier Kenny, uh, picking up on, the, on some questions from uh, Senator Barrasso, methane is the low hanging fruit of climate change. It's the most potent greenhouse gas, 80 times more than CO2. Uh, I note in your testimony you've lowered it significantly. How did you do that? Was it regulatory? Was it a fee? Was it a carbon fee? What, what brought that about? Because this is a, a, an important uh, topic for our discussion here in the States. Yeah, through uh, a regulatory approach, really with application of technology that's been developed in the Alberta industry over years, we have committed to, uh, we're the first uh, subnational jurisdiction in North America to commit to methane reduction targets to reduce uh, methane by 45% uh, below the 2014 baseline, and to do that by 2025. 20, uh, and did you, did you do that? Did you impose, did you tell industry you can't emit more than X and you have a vigorous inspection regime? Uh, well, e e yes, there's a target and uh, there is a rigorous inspection regime. Uh, we, uh, we've seen some incredibly innovative technology developed in our province, which has made a big difference. And we, and a lot of that has now been marketed in the United States, and we'd be happy to share that expertise. Thank you. Uh, and I'd, I'd appreciate it if you could follow up, perhaps have your staff uh, give us a, a monograph on your methane policies, because this is something that's very important to us. Uh, Minister Wilkinson, uh, again, not for today, because we have such limited time, but perhaps you could have your staff give us some background on, on how you streamline the permitting process. My position has always been, I want the most timely, streamlined, and, and effective environmental process with the strongest environmental safeguards. And I think that's your standard. I'd like to, we, how do you do it in Canada? And what lessons can we take here for our permitting process so it doesn't take, as Senator Brasso pointed out, 10 years uh, to permit a, a mining operation that we need? So you don't have to answer now, but perhaps you could have your staff supply us with some thoughts on, on how your permitting process works and if they could compare it with ours, um, which is quite Rube Goldbergish, uh, that would be very helpful. Uh, Ms. Camden, uh, Hydro-Quebec, of course, we went through the difficult New England Connect process in, uh, in Maine with the connection from Hydro-Quebec to Boston. What tripped that up more than anything else was a section of 56 miles through virgin forest in, in northern Maine. And that was, that was the sort of focus of a lot of the controversy. Could Hydro-Quebec uh, and the, the proponents of that proposal think about burying that section of, of line rather than a, a strip of, uh, of clear cutting through the forest? And is that something that's under examination? Because that might relieve a lot of the controversy surrounding that project. Thank you, Senator, for uh, your question. But uh, this is not in my, uh, in my area of expertise in my portfolio. But I will make sure that the Quebec's office in DC follows up with your staff with an answer on this question. However, if you want, I could, I could share with you the practices that we had put in place in Quebec regarding the streamlining of our processes, regarding I'd, I'd, issue permitting? I'd, I'd, I'd very it? much like to see that. Thank oh, you. Thank you. So um, there is a strong commitment from our government to reduce the administrative bur burden. And each department within the government has to provide a three-year plan with different measures, being regulatory measure or... Um, Legal I don't want measures? to cut you off, but I have I've got a little clock in front of me that says I only have thirty six seconds left. Okay. So I want to go to I want to get one question to Mr. Bradley before I leave. 
All right. I've always been fascinated by the concept that you articulated and I think needs to be further developed, and that is Hydro-Quebec being, or Canadian Hydro being the battery for New England. Norway is the battery for Denmark right now. And as we move into offshore wind, we could have an excess of energy during certain periods of the day, which we could send north. You could store the water during those periods and then send us the dispatchable hydro. Uh, you mentioned this. Is, do you see this as something that's a feasible option for us? Yes, thank you. Thank you for the question, Senator. I, I, indeed, not only do I see it as a feasible option, I, I think this is this is going to be how we optimize the system in the future, and it won't just be in the Northwest. It will be interregionally all across North America. We do it at a smaller scale already today. Uh, I mentioned that the electricity flow uh, is two-way between Canada and the United States. Often that flow from the United States into Canada is we must run facilities in the United States uh, that uh, that overnight are, are looking for markets and are essentially today being stored in reservoirs uh, well, as, as the, giant batteries. The big constraint on the development of renewables, of course, is intermittency, and intermittency is solved by, by some kind of baseload response. We're all talking about batteries and mining and lithium and cobalt and nickel when we've got a gigantic battery already in place uh, in, in Canada. Uh, and I've always, I've for 20 years, thought that this was a way to, to offset the intermittency. So I hope that that's something we can work on. And to the extent you're aware of data on that concept and how it could be implemented, please let me let me know. Indeed, we sure will. And, and we've always thought of our, our reservoirs as giant batteries. And, and Denmark and Norway are doing this right as we speak. So this is not an unprecedented idea. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Premier Kenny, it's great to have you with us. Um, over the last few years, environmental 